right, Luke chapter 1. Bring up my notes here. Luke chapter 1, verse 17 is where we left off. And you can go back and get the previous audios and uh, videos if you've missed up. Much information in 17 verses we've done. And he shall go before him. We're talking, of, we're talking to Zacharias, uh, the angel. I don't think he's given a name yet, but he's Gabriel. And he's, he's speaking about a child that hasn't been conceived yet. Which later on will be John Baptist. Prophecy of a child. And he says in verse 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. That's important. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And to and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now that is a mouthful. Elijah. Had Israel received Jesus as their long-awaited Messiah, John would have somehow would have become Elijah. The three last names that show up in the last book of your Bible, Moses, Elijah, and the Lord. Now, we're not going to get into great big de detail here, but... Had they re received the Messiah, which God already knew they wouldn't, history would have been completely changed than what it is today. There would have been no church age. The church age is because they had rejected. We Gentiles coming into the Israel promise is a stumbling stone to make Israel jealous when you read Romans. Rejection thereof he is just John the Baptist and loses his head. John the Baptist would have had a great future here, I guess, you guys were reading. Had they received Jesus Christ as a Messiah. And for their sin of not taking the Messiah and believing Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is God, a certain church out there, religious group, John ends up dead with his head decapitated off his body. The sins of the people caused John to be beheaded. Your rejection of Jesus Christ as your Savior will cause death to you. And think about all the people in your circle that you could witness to had you gotten saved. But John will be just John the Baptist. Now, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. And what we're reading now about John the Baptist, guess what? He's not even conceived yet. Elizabeth doesn't know nothing. Verse 2. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, two of John's disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? You the one, Lord Jesus. He's in, he's in jail. He's in jail because they re rejected Jesus. If I'm supposed to be Elijah, we're supposed to have this. Why am I in jail? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, going back to John, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John the Baptist, what went ye up in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? 
Behold, they that were so they that wear soft clothing are in kings. John was no piddly little squeak, you know, just something that's blue in the wind. John had spiritual guts and he didn't wear the fancy dancy clothes. He wore camel. He didn't smoke them, he wore them. But what went but what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet. What prophet? Elijah. You ever read what Elijah did? That's what Israel wanted. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. He comes before Jesus, which shall prepare thy way before thee. I, verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Think about all those people who think they're greater than John the Baptist after what Jesus has said. How about that? The only three men the Bible ever account as the greatest is Solomon, G uh, Jesus Christ, and John the Baptist. And you look at the lives of those men and you, t you try to compare them. Solomon knew much. How many of your writings are in the Bible? Solomon has Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. There's one more I can't think of, I think. How many books do you have in the Bible? John the Baptist. Have you been so bold to walk up to a king and tell him his, his sins? Verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist unto now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, Moses, and Elijah. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was to come. You notice Jesus said that after John's disciples went back to prison. He didn't want to give John a false hope. You mean I could get in this prison and I could be that? No, I'm sorry. Because it said, if you will receive it, what did they do to Jesus? And they rejected him, crucified him after, after John the Baptist was beheaded. John never comes out of prison in, verse, in chapter 11. But if ye receive it, receive what? The law and the prophets and Jesus Christ who spoke about him. What did Moses and Elijah speak, of, speak to Jesus about when they were in the Mount Transfer? Making sure that Jesus has fulfilled everything before he starts off to Jerusalem. Gabriel? Now, you think Gabriel's important? Gabriel shows up to Mary. He shows up to Zacharias. I'm finally getting his name right. And he shows up to Daniel. Do you think Daniel, I mean, Daniel. Do you think Gabriel has some importance, right? God sent him. And Gabriel tells Zacharias, your son is going to be in the spirit of Elijah. What more than Jesus Christ, who is God, and said, if you would have received it, he would have been Elias. So, let's jump here just real quick, and I'm going to get out of it. We're not going to study it. If they had received Jesus Christ as a Messiah, Elias and Moses would have shown up with Jesus Christ, and history would have been all changed. Somehow Jesus Christ would have to die, and then you would have the seven years tribulation, and then the millennium would happen, and 
We'd be in eternity by now. No, we wouldn't be. A million years? No, we wouldn't. We'd be in the millennium today. Let's say 33 AD. Let's say they received Christ, they crucified him, but, they, but he's the Messiah, they believed in him. He comes up from the grave three days later. Seven years tribulation. 40 AD would, would begin the millennium. 1,040,000 A.D. would be the end of the millennium. Satan would be loose, and he had his little quick little army, and God would overthrow him, and then we would be at the great white throne judgment, and then eternity has already begun. But they rejected it. Matthew 16, 14. The people's rejection of Jesus Christ caused John to die in prison. Do you know what your sins will do to someone else? Sin is like a VD. That is something you can pass on to your children and pass on to your great-grandchildren. How many children did Adam pass sin on to? Anybody want to give a count? Everyone that has a belly button. Adam and Eve didn't have belly buttons. Belly buttons are a mark of sin. Because had you had we been sinless and not taken that fruit of the tree of life, we wouldn't be we wouldn't have belly buttons. There'd be no marks. Did you ever think about that? We'd be a belly buttonless people without sin. You can throw that out. You don't have to keep that one. Uh, Matthew sixteen fourteen. That was something to think about though. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. That's kind of funny because John the Baptist was already there. And some Elias. And some, I mean, excuse me, and others, Jeremiah's. Can you picture Jeremiah being one of those, those, those saints that risen when Jesus died and he came up from the grave? Walking around Jerusalem, shaking his head. Wow, things haven't changed. And do you know how many converts Jeremiah got? And can you imagine Jeremiah going around Jerusalem telling people, Hey, I'm Jeremiah. Hello, hello, I'm Jeremiah. And no one got converted under him. <laughs> Again. The, the Bible says that the, the saints arose, the graves are open. But look what they were looking for. They were looking for John the Baptist. They were looking for Elias. They were looking for that one, the forerunner. How about that? Look at Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Just before Matthew. The last book in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. The close of the Old Testament. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, there's Jesus, of righteousness, Arise with healing in his wings, the second advent. And ye shall go forth, grow up as a cast of the stall. That's where they're fed. So they're being nurtured. And ye shall tread down the wicked, second advent. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, second advent. Remember ye the law of Moses, the law, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, uh, Mount, I can't think of the name now. What is it? No, uh, Exodus 20. I can't think. Uh, of all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. That's Exodus 20. 
cyanide. Let's make sense. Cyanide. Behold, watch it carefully. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Had they received John the Baptist and Jesus Christ before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Elijah and Moses is coming in the tribulation period. But what if they had received Jesus Christ as their Messiah and truly believed that John the Baptist becoming Elijah would have been the great day before the great day of the coming of the Lord? And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. What did it say back in, in Luke chapter 1 we read? In 17. Matthew 17, 10. Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. With, Ma with what we just read in Malachi 4, See, the disciples didn't get it, but they were not stupid. Because look what they say in Matthew 17, 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Look at verse 4. Then answered Peter and said, Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee. Remember Malachi 4? Remember the order? One for Moses and one for Elias. Don't tell me Peter didn't wasn't thinking of Malachi chapter 4. That's the same exact order that was mentioned. Jesus Christ, I mean, excuse me, Peter told you that the son of righteousness in chapter 4 of Malachi is Jesus Christ. The, then Moses with the law, and then the, the prophet of Isaiah. So look at that. Verse 10 again. Verse 11. Jesus answered, saying to him, Elias, truly shall first come and restore all things shall first come John the Baptist already came but verse 12 but I say unto you that Elias is come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed whatever they wanted to do Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. John the Baptist suffered. Not just jail. Watch 13 carefully now. Then the disciples understood that he spanked unto them of John the Baptist. Do you realize of all the population in 32 AD, well, this, yeah, about 32 AD, thereabouts. Now get this. Only four people knew that John the Baptist was Elias. And yet he wasn't Elias because the entire nation, outside of 11 men, because Judas betrayed him, did not receive him as their savior. John died because of their unbelief and, and rebellion. So Elias will come again. Jesus just prophesied to you to tell you, you just saw Moses and Elias, but Elias is coming back. Why did they say that? Why did Peter say, let's build a tabernacle? Because they knew the scripture. They knew that they were supposed to stay. But the entire nation rejected, and thus they lost. In the rejection of the Messiah, John the Baptist dies in prison. Now don't you think 
Israel is going to have to give an account of that. Won't you think? Don't you think John would have a beef with the nation of Israel? The crucify him, crucify him. Meant John the Baptist was just John the Baptist. You know, if you don't serve the Lord and do what you're supposed to, your preacher in your church may be just the preacher of that church. But if you do what you're supposed to do and you do the word of God, and I'm talking about a faithful preacher that reads the word and loves the Lord and saves and wants to do, and if you all work together even as sinners, and you know what? In, in heaven you can make a name for your preacher. But if you don't do, it's just the preacher. And the bars won't get shut down in, in your city. Listen, there are men in America that did what God's supposed to do, and they shut down the booze. They shut down the cigarette. They shut down the business to listen to the preacher. They would invite the guys into their place of business and hear. Listen, even Dr. Ruckman said there was a time in his life he would go to a pool hall, and they would allow him to preach in a pool hall. Try that today. Our church can't even preach on the streets in their own town without businessmen trying to get rid of them. But how many businessmen are trying to get rid of the filthy pornography out there? But no, we got to get rid of the churches. Fine. You don't want John the Baptist? Well, one day I'll take them all up and then you can have your hell on earth. You can serve Satan. Satan rules. Yay! Go ahead. I'll give you. I'll give you exactly what you want. I'll give you seven years of hell on earth with Satan as your ruler. Then I'll get rid of you and I'll give everybody a million year reign with me. Jesus Christ speaking. The nation of Israel crying crucify him was John the Baptist to be just John the Baptist. Yeah, I guess. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Isaiah 40, verse 3. You didn't know that about John the Baptist, did you? Isaiah 40, verse 3. And we'll start in verse 1. Had they received Christ as their Savior. So... Moses and Elijah showing up in the tribulation is the preparation of Israel for the Messiah is going to come back on horseback. He's not going to come back in a babe in a womb. So before each advent of Jesus Christ, John or Elijah, you put it and or how you ever want to do it, shows up to the nation of Israel. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Well, in the tribulation, they're going to need comfort, aren't they? The time of Jacob's trouble. In the time of the first advent of Jesus, how many, was it 400 years of silence, is it? Between Malachi and, and, and Matthew? Or the birth of Jesus, I believe it's 400 years? You think of, I, I, I'm going to say 400 years, I, I could be wrong. But you think of 400 years of silence from God, you, don't you think you need a comfort? And what does Jesus say? I'll send you what? A comforter. How about that? That comfort ye, comfort ye, is supposed to be the comforter. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. 
Isn't that what John did? And cry unto her, and her warfare is accomplished. There was no wars in Jerusalem during Jesus' time. Imagine that continual peace. Except for in 70 AD, Titus came in and destroyed the land. For iniquity is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sin. Oh, you wait. 200% interest, Jeremiah 16, 18. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Why was Israel in the wilderness? Because they sinned against God. When they got out of the wilderness, where did they end it up? In their land. Prepare ye the way to the Lord. That's John the Baptist. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The highway to the Lord coming the second advent. How close is first and second advent would it be if they had received Jesus Christ as their Messiah? Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. This is the second advent. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. The second advent. And the glory shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. That is the mission of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was to prepare for the Messiah. And they rejected Messiah. And they rejected John. They rejected John first. Long before Jesus showed up. The people were to be ready for John. And thus be ready for the Messiah. And they were not. Now back to Luke 117. Now what we read in Malachi, the last verse of Malachi, verse 17 of Luke 1. And you shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias. And turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, Malachi 4. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. How about that? And read that along with Matthew 17, 10 to 13, and John 1, 19 to 21. And this was spoken before the child is even yet conceived. Now it's not recorded. Well, this is recorded. What? tribe was Zacharias of. He was the tribe of Aaron. He was a priest. He's in the holy place. What were the Levites to do for the people of Israel? They were to teach them the law and everything. Do you wonder if Zacharias went back and teach? It doesn't record that he does or he doesn't. To try to teach the people that John the that one to say, but the 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 forerunner of the Christ is coming. I've heard from an angel after he was made undumb. When we get to John, I mean, when we get to Zacharias praising God for the birth of his son. But because of rebelling, well, let's, let's go back with rebellion. Can you imagine what life would be like on September 17, 2014, had Adam and Eve never eaten that fruit? Can you even fathom? Life with no sin and no pain. Let's talk about those two things only. No pain. Can you imagine a life with no ambulances, no medical, no pills, no hospital, no vaccines, no Ebola, no diseases, and everything else you can put under the title of medical sickness and ailments and all, all that? How 
How many of you out there appreciate a headache? I, I assume everybody gets a headache. If not, let's go for everybody. Let's say we take everybody who's ever been born, put their thumb on the table and smash it with a ball peen hammer so we all can feel what pain is. All right? Would you appreciate that? Can you imagine taking, your, taking 12 ball peen hammers and smashing your thumb and not ever feeling nothing? And you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be stupid enough to even do that without sin. Yet you tell a child it, it's hot not to touch it, and they touch it. That's sin. That's disobedience. We are in a crisis we are in today because Adam and Eve rebelled against God. Flip it all the way over to uh, 4,000 years later, and then flip it over to 2,000 years later. Do you see what Israel, the nation, is because they're disobedience to Jesus Christ, who is God? Do you realize they're trying to keep the law today and they don't have a king? They don't have a temple. They don't have a priest. They can't. Go to any. Listen, I go by the, the Jewish synagogue every night when I go to work. Stop there on a Friday night and say, hey, how many times do you guys go to Jerusalem? And they may say, oh, we go there once a, once a while to go over. But the Bible says three times a year. How many times those three times a year do you go over there? Where does your high priest go at the Day of Atonement when you go to Jerusalem? Well, they can't go nowhere. We don't even know who the high priest is. Really? Why is that? Because you rejected God. Because Adam and Eve rebelled against God, we have sin and death. The wages of sin is death. Because the nation of Israel has rejected... Listen, we're not into John the Baptist. We're talking about before he's even conceived, and they have rejected him, and he dies because of their rejection. Sin causes death. Now let me tell you something. You're going to die because you are a sinner. I preach this at the, at the farmer's market every other week. We're down there, Lord willing. The wages of sin is death. The reason why you die is because you are a sinner. But do you realize because of your sin, your sin, you may cause somebody else to die. Did you ever think about that? Father, every time you put that booze to your mouth, do you realize your children are watching you? And you may one day have a child grow up in alcohol see, and die of a failed liver or an auto wreck or just being destroyed by alcohol. Mother, do you realize when you smoke those cigarettes that your daughter's watching you? And children are prone to take what you do wrong more than what you do right. And 40, 50, 60 years later, that child may die of lung cancer by something that you taught her. And do you realize, mother and father, that God will hold you accountable for what your children do in that case? You taught them. The nation of Israel is going to have to give an account to what happened to John. You wonder if the nation of Israel, this, this is a wonder you could throw it in the garbage can. You wonder if the nation of Israel had received Christ as a Messiah, had John the Baptist walked up to the king, Herod, and said, Hey, that woman does not belong to you, sir. I believe he did it respectfully. You wonder if had they received Jesus Christ as their Messiah, and that Herod would say, What are you talking about, John? Well, here it says in the law, it says, you're not supposed to do that. I know you're a Gentile, but you know, it's just not right to have her as your wife. You serious, John? Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm proud for the God. I'm serious. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, and you're just wondering. I said, you don't have to believe this, but if you don't say. You wonder if, if, if that king would say to John, well, what need I do? You seek to God and find out what I need to do to be right. And how would the path change?
Jesus Christ standing before Herod one day, and the Jews, they would have to reject him anyway, but the Jews saying, hey, Herod, we don't, and Herod would say, listen, by the prophecy of John the Baptist that stands at my left hand, and Jesus Christ that stands at my right hand, this is Jesus Christ God, and this is the forerunner of him, that you're Messiah. No, I ain't going to crucify him. Life would have been so much different. And yet now 2,000 years, the Jews are without a priest, they're without a temple, they're ever since 70 A.D. 70 A.D., Jesus said, because of your rejection of me. That's something to think about. And to realize your sins has heavy consequences. And not only in your life, but in someone else's life. Now, you keep on going the rebellious way you're going. You may turn your pastor off one day. He might just give up. Why go forward? Why keep on going? Uh, is that you, Jesus? If it's you, Jesus, why am I sitting here with no help and in prison? Thank you. 